So welcome to the lesson, CPM lesson 1.1.1 for Algebra 2. Um, this is just the first of many lessons, but this is also something that can be used by anybody who's dealing with functions. So you will see in the video that I will describe it as a certain CPM lesson, but I'll also have um, other topics listed in it. So anybody who's not CPM oriented will be able to look and see how things are solved based on this problem. Um, if you happen to like this video, I am just getting started out. So please subscribe below and follow other videos. I will be publishing videos for Algebra 2, Algebra 1, Geometry, and Pre-Calculus regularly. So hopefully that will help. And there will be more information from an introductory video at some other point. But let's get into this one. This particular is uh, a particular problem is kind of like a puzzle to me. You have all of these problems right here, there's four different functions. And we have to put them in order so that when we have an input that goes into the first one of six, which you'll see up here, that the output after putting them through all four functions equals 11. So my instinct on this was to kind of go backwards a little bit. And I did start by looking just at the f of x function here. And I thought, well, if I get 11 as the answer there, that means that the input here would have had to be 121. So if f of 121 equals the square root of 121, it also equals 11. So that kind of helped me figure out where I was going from that point. But that also means I had to have a pretty high number um, on one of these other functions. So I was looking, where could I have put gotten 121 from? Well, I could have gotten it from here because it's um, two squared, but it's minus seven. So I'm going to have an odd number. And then I might also have gotten it here because it would be um, an odd number. But then the problem is I'd have a 121 over two. So that means I'm going to have a weird fraction anyway. So I decided to start um, by looking also over here. Um, if I have a 121 um, here, I'm gonna have a pretty high number and really I'm ending with 11, so that's probably not gonna work. So my instinct was to start, start here with six. And then hopefully that will help me lead to the other two equations and end with this um, F of 121. So let's start with that. I'm going to plug in, let's use a different color here. I'm going to plug in G of 6. Well, I'm going to put that into the parentheses. And 6 minus 2 is 4. OK. And 4 squared is 16. But we apply the negative last. So this is a negative 16. OK. So that's OK, because it's even. Now, I'm not going to want to raise, I'm not going to want to put a negative 16 into this equation because then that means I'm doing 2 to the negative 16th, which would be a major fraction. So I'm going to try putting in a negative 16 here. So let's get a different color again and let's plug in um, k of negative 16. Well, that'll be a negative negative 16 over 2 minus 1. So that equals an 8, because 16 divided by 2 is 8, and it's a negative negative, so it's going to be 8 minus 1, which equals 7. So that means 7 is going to be put into, so we have used, right now we have used, let's do this, okay. We have used that equation, the F, the G, and the K. So that leaves us with the H. So let's take it over here and look at, if I use, I'll just go ahead and use this white that I already have and put H of seven, okay? And I'm going to say two to the seventh minus seven. Well, two to the seventh is 128. Minus seven equals 121. So my hunch was correct. So. Now I can put these in order. Okay, so we'll put these in order. So the first one was our G of six. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that up here. Let me make sure I get the right color. So at least something you can see. So my G of six is 
I'll do the g of x function, which is a negative x minus 2 squared. My second function was the k of x. So we'll go ahead and put that in here as well. And that equals the negative x over 2 minus 1. Then our next function was the h of x. It's not a very pretty h, but you guys can, you can read it. So 2 to the x minus 7. Then my final one, which was my hunch, which I feel like that's a win, is the square root of x. And so our input values, again, we started with 6 which led us to, by plugging into the first one, to a negative 16. Then we plugged in a negative 16, which led us to the output of 7. Then we plugged 7 as the, and the input of our next function, which gave us the output of 121, which led me to my hunch of the last one, which the input was 121, which led us to the final output of 11, which was our target. So hopefully that helps. But one thing also that you'll realize later, because you're just learning this, um, that what you also did was called the composite function. So you were using multiple functions to come up with an output. So another way that you'll see that in the future, I will go ahead and write out here is, since we started out with the G function, you would write G of six, Okay, but then that was the input for into G, which gave us the output, which we were able to put into the K function. Then we were able to put it into the, the output from the K function into the H function. And then we were able to put the output from the H function into the F function. And then after we did this, it would all, the output would equal 11, which was our target. This is that composite function. And the way it reads is f of h of k of g of 6 equals 11. So that input of 6 gave us the output of 11. And hopefully that helps. And we'll talk to you on the next problem. So this problem was really very similar to the last problem. It's just a little trickier because they're asking us to come up with a much bigger number of 131,065 with an input of 64. But I bet if you're looking at these equations, if you're like me, your first instinct probably is also to go to that F function. And that's what I did because I knew that if I had F of 64, it was gonna equal eight. And then there was other things that I could do. So let's just dive right in. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna move all of these over. And we're just gonna play with things instinctually like I like to do, because it's this is not a given. You just have to figure it out. So I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to use white here. So f of 64. I'm going to just say that's my first one. And actually, I already know the answer, as you probably have figured out. But the square root of 64 is 8. So my input was 64. My output for f is 8. And so now I need to look at these three equations. And I have to figure out which one's going to give me something that's not a fraction, that's not outlandish or crazy. So my first one is to look and say, if I put 8 into here, well, I'm going to get a negative 36, which I could probably put up here. So I'm going to try that. I'm just going to go ahead and try that. All right. So I'm going to take that 8 and I'm going to put it into the G function. So G of 8 equals a negative on the outside, 8 minus 2 squared. Well, 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So I end up with a negative 36 because I have to apply this last as part of the order of operations. So that means now I have a negative 36, which I actually like for this equation because it's going to end up being positive when I plug in a negative 36 here. So let's, let's try that with... Um, the K, so K of 36, negative 36 equals a negative, negative 36 over two minus one. Well, a negative, negative 36 is positive, but 36 divided by two is 18 minus one, which equals 17. Well, now I'm gonna go ahead and I know that two to the 17th isn't completely crazy, um, 
but I'm going to go ahead and plug in two to the 17th. Let's see here. So that is H of 17 equals two to the 17 minus seven. So, well, two to the 17th equals 131072 minus seven. Well, guess what? We are now at 131,065. That's exactly what we wanted. So our order was, first it was F of 64, which became G of 8, which K of negative 36, H of 17, and gave us our final output. So if we were doing that again up top here, we would be writing F, let's see here, I just went to a different pen, F of X equals the square root of X for our first one. G of X equals a negative x minus 2 squared. Then we're going to go to k. k of x equals a negative x over 2 minus 1. And then our last one is h of x. It's a better h than I had on part a. Equals 2 to the x minus 7. So we're just going to kind of reiterate what our inputs and our outputs were. So our input for the first one was 64, which was given to us by the problem. Our output on the first one is 8. Then we used 8 as our input on the second one, which gave us an output of negative 36. Then we plugged negative 36 in as our input for the third one, which gave us a positive 17. Then we plug 17 into the last problem, which gave us our final of 131,065, which was the target. So. Just like I did on the last equation, let's go ahead and write this out. So this one was a little different. Let me move these out of the way a little bit. Oops, wow, that was weird. Okay, move that and that. Let's see here. Okay, cool. All right, same thing we did on the last one. So we would be as a composite function. And so now we'll go ahead and put down the composite function like I just said. And we started with, our first one was f of 64. And then it went into the G function. And then the G function's output went into the K function. Notice we're going from the inside out. And then the final function was H. So the output on this one was 131,065. So that reads as H of K of G of F of 64. Again, composite function. You don't know that terminology yet, but you will hear it. And that ends 1.1.1's 1 .1 lesson.